Today's series, like many other genres, are quite diverse. Among them, there are those whose viewing can cause sadness and boredom, and there are those that can cause excitement and empathy. In any case, whatever you watch the result will be truly unpredictable. But despite the abundance of fans of this genre, new series constantly appear, surpassing the previous ones in quality and complexity of plots. Each released episode gives great pleasure and a storm of emotions. And this series will be no exception. The upcoming episode can easily amaze its viewers with incredible plot twists that will keep them in suspense until the very final frame. The future premiere has a high expectation rating, and the creators have already announced the exact date of the release of the new episode. The show of the episode should be expected on March 7th. This series has been a godsend for many viewers. No wonder why there is so much excitement around it. So many people are now looking forward to this episode, and it is to be hoped that it will bring us many incredible experiences. Series with many episodes do not lose their relevance, and today they are the most popular. Next in our review we will tell you about series that have absorbed the best qualities and have become global hits. Miracle Workers is an American anthology comedy television series created by Simon Rich. It is based on Rich's writings, with each season being based on a different work. Miracle Workers premiered on February 12, 2019, with its seven-episode first season. The first season follows Craig, a low-level angel responsible for handling all of humanity's prayers, and Eliza, a recent transfer from the Department of Dirt. Their boss, God, has pretty much checked out to focus on his favorite hobbies. To prevent Earth's destruction, Craig and Eliza must achieve their most impossible miracle to date. Alongside the initial series order announcement, it was confirmed that Daniel Radcliffe and Owen Wilson would star in the series. Simon Rich back when he wrote the book had high hopes that someday it would be filmed, but no one seriously believed that anyone would be able to recreate such a huge world on the screen. Daniel Radcliffe was a fan of the books even before the adaptation and was one of the first to join the cast of the series. At the same time, Simon greatly admired Daniel as an actor. Radcliffe is also an excellent producer, he helped the project in every way and took a lot of different creative decisions, from finding designers to the choice of the cast. In the early stages of script development, Owen Wilson was in the cast. But after the actor saw the final drafts of the script, his opinion disagreed with the screenwriters about his character. So he was replaced by Steve Buscemi. The idea of the creators was that God was flawed and vulnerable, just like the people he created. They wanted to see a character who is sometimes reckless and irrational. That's the kind of God Steve would play. Misfits is a British science fiction comedy drama television show, about a group of young offenders sentenced to work in a community service program, where they obtain supernatural powers after a strange electrical storm. The show premiered on November 12, 2009 and concluded on December 11, 2013 in its fifth season. The show is filmed in South East London, mostly on location around the Southmere Lake in Thamesmead, including the signature shot of the four multi-story buildings from the roof of the Lakeside Centre and Bexley College. The first series was accompanied by an online viral marketing, on social networking websites such as Facebook and Twitter. For example, in a British first, the characters Simon and Kelly tweeted during the initial transmission of each episode, with the content of the tweets provided by writers Sam Leifer and Ben Edwards, under the direction of lead writer Howard Overman and executive producer Petra Fry. British reviews were positive. The Times gave it 4 out of 5 stars, calling it a new union, salty British street humor with whiz-bang special effects. The Irish media were also impressed with the show. The Evening Herald called the debut episode dark, hilarious, exciting and beautifully produced. The Tenth Kingdom is an American fairy tale fantasy miniseries written by Simon Moore. It depicts the adventures of a young woman and her father after they are transported from New York City, through a magical mirror, into a parallel world of fairy tales. From the first episode the series has won the hearts of millions of people around the world. In a hidden realm, fairy tale characters inhabit nine magical kingdoms where an evil queen plots to rule them. She is held in a fourth kingdom prison. This kingdom is under the rule of Prince Wendell, the spoiled, arrogant grandson of Snow White. Weeks before his coronation ceremony, the queen enlists the help of the brutal troll king and his three children to release her right before the prince makes his annual visit to the prison. 
Prince Wendell is captured by the evil queen, who is his wicked stepmother. She turns him into a golden retriever while her very own retriever is transformed into a facsimile of Wendell. In a panic, the transformed prince flees through the prison, stumbles across a mirror portal in the basement, and is transported to New York City. The Troll King orders his bumbling children Burley, Blabberwort, and Bluebell to bring back the escaped prince while the queen releases a half-wolf prisoner to retrieve him instead. Meanwhile, regular Manhattan inhabitants, headstrong waitress Virginia Lewis and her oafish father Tony are entangled in the mishaps caused by the new magical arrivals to the city, including Wolf falling helplessly in love with Virginia and Tony being given six wishes, which he foolishly uses for personal gain, upon which they have a tendency to backfire. Shameless is an American comedy drama television series developed by John Wells that aired on Showtime from 2011 to 2021. It is an adaptation of Paul Abbott's British series of the same name and features an ensemble cast led by William H., Macy and Emmy Rossum. The show is set on the south side of Chicago, Illinois. With the premiere of the ninth season on September 9, 2018, Shameless became the longest-running original scripted series in Showtime's history. The series depicts the poor, dysfunctional family of Frank Gallagher, a neglectful single father of six. Fiona, Philip, Ian, Debbie, Carl, and Liam. He spends his days drunk or in search of misadventures, and his children learn to take care of themselves. The show's producers sought to distinguish this production from previous American working-class shows by highlighting how Frank's alcoholism and drug addiction affect his family. Shameless was adapted from a long-running, award-winning British television comedy drama of the same name. Most episodes begin with one of the main characters who breaks the fourth wall to berate the viewer about missing previous episodes. Then the show cuts to a recap montage of plot points relevant to the current episode, followed by the opening title sequence. The series is mostly filmed at a Los Angeles studio with some scenes filmed in Chicago. Shameless premiered on January 9, 2011, in the United States, becoming Showtime's highest-rated series debut on record across the network's target demographic. The first episode of the series generated 982,000 unique viewers, and was Showtime's largest audience for a series premiere since Dead Like Me in 2003. The fourth episode, posted 1.45 million total viewers. Shameless was the cable channel's best-performing first-year drama. Defying the usual downward trend following a premiere, the series built on its initial audience, becoming number one in its time slot among adults aged 18 through 49. Subsequent episodes' audiences fluctuated between a million and 1.14 million viewers. The March 27, 2011 season finale drew an audience of 1.157 million. The third season's premiere episode drew 2 million viewers, becoming the show's highest-rated episode to date. It has since maintained average ratings of just below a million viewers throughout the remainder of its episodes. Tim Goodman of The Hollywood Reporter said that Shameless is excellent, compelling television from the first moment. As long as it stays true to the roots of the original, it's going to be essential viewing. Dot. Once Upon a Time is an American fantasy adventure drama television series that aired for seven seasons on ABC from October 23, 2011 to May 18, 2018. The action alternates between two main settings, a fantastical world where fairy tales happen, and a fictional seaside town in Maine called Storybrooke. The real-world part of the story unfolds with the characters of Emma Swan and her 10-year-old son, Henry Mills. Henry discovers the other people of the town are fairy tale characters. The audience is shown the backstory of the town's people as fairy tale characters, in conjunction with their unfolding stories in the real world. Most of the show's characters are extracted from famous fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen, popular Western literature, folklore, Arthurian legend, and Greek mythology, as well as original Disney characters from the Walt Disney Company. The core themes of the show are hope and optimism. For the first six seasons, the series is set in the fictional seaside town of Storybrook, Maine, in which the residents are actually fairy tale characters that were transported to the real world town and robbed of their memories. Adam Horowitz and Edward Kitsis conceived the show in 2004 before joining the writing staff of Lost, but wanted to wait until that series was over to focus on this project. Eight years before the Once Upon a Time pilot, Kitsis and Horowitz became inspired to write fairy tales out of a love of mystery and excitement of exploring lots of different worlds. 
They presented the premise to networks, but were refused because of its fantastic nature. From their time on Lost, the writers learned to look at the story in a different way, namely that character has to trump mythology. Endless Love is a Turkish drama series. The series has become a milestone in the international history of Turkish series, being awarded by the International Emmy Awards for Best Telenovela in 2017, becoming the first and only Turkish series to win this award. In addition, it has also been the only Turkish series to become a finalist in these awards. The novel has become the most watched Turkish series in the world, being broadcast in more than 110 countries with successful audiences and has been translated into more than 50 languages. In its broadcast in the United States through Univision, it became the most watched foreign soap opera in the entire history of the country and the Turkish series with the highest audience, surpassing its main competitors. The love story remains the most watched fiction in Hispanic prime time with more than 2 million viewers every day and close to 4 million in its final episode, something that no other series has achieved. Currently, Kara Sevda remains the most watched Turkish series in the United States. The first episode was a resounding success. The plot opened up an interesting story for the viewer. Kemal Soydara is the son of a middle-class family. In his last year in mining engineering, a girl named Nian enters his monotonous life. Love is impossible because of the class difference between them, but they manage to be together. That is until the day that Kemal has to move to a Zonguldak mine, unaware that Nian will be forced to marry Amir Kosbogul, a man in love with her since they were children. Kemal isolates himself at work, and one day, following his actions to help in an accident at the mine, Kemal is promoted and assumes a position of power in the company. Five years later, Kemal makes the decision to return to Istanbul to face his past. Resident Alien is an American science fiction mystery comedy drama television series created by Chris Sheridan, based on the comic book of the same title by Peter Hogan and Steve Parkhouse. In March 2021, the series was renewed for a second season which premiered on January 26, 2022. Alan Tudyk as Harry, the titular alien with an unpronounceable birth name who has crash-landed on Earth, killed Dr. Harry Vanderspiegel, and assumed his identity. He has been sent to Earth to destroy the human race, believing that this would benefit the planet, but he spends the series struggling with the moral ambiguity of his mission after absorbing the human quality of emotions. He is fascinated by humans and has learned how to speak English, as well as how to masquerade as a medical examiner, from watching reruns of Law and Order. Although he attempts to blend in with people, he consistently stands out because of his misunderstandings of social cues and awkward speech and behavioral patterns. As the series progresses, he learns more about human interactions and involuntarily develops human emotions and attachments while in disguise. He possesses superhuman strength, durability, and agility as well as advanced intelligence and shape-shifting abilities. Stuntman Keith Arbuthnet plays the alien in his true form, an androgynous, humanoid octopodiforms being. The plot of the first episode of the first season turned out to be very interesting. An alien spacecraft is struck by lightning and crash lands near the rural town of Patience, Colorado. Its pilot, whose real name is unpronounceable by humans, was on a mission to wipe out human life on Earth. Stranded, he must blend in by assuming human form and the identity of Dr. Harry Vanderspiegel, whom he killed upon encountering. For months, Harry has been searching the mountains for his device that will wipe out humanity and fishing the lake for Dr. Vanderspiegel's corpse. Harry is asked by Sheriff Mike and Deputy Liv to examine the body of Sam Hodges, the town doctor, and his behavior is off-putting but accepted. He even takes on the doctor's job with help from the head nurse Asta Twelve Trees, but he learns his true identity can be seen by Max, Mayor Ben Hawthorne's young son. Sherlock is a British mystery crime drama television series based on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes detective stories. Created by Stephen Moffat and Mark Gatiss, it stars Benedict Cumberbatch as Sherlock Holmes and Martin Freeman as Dr. John Watson. Thirteen episodes have been produced, with four three-part series airing from 2010 to 2017 and a special episode that aired on January 1, 2016. Sherlock has been praised for the quality of its writing, acting, and directing. It has been nominated for numerous awards including Emmys, BAFTAs and a Golden Globe, 
winning several awards across a variety of categories. The first episode, A Study in Pink, loosely based upon the first Sherlock Holmes novel A Study in Scarlet, was written by Moffat and directed by Paul McGuigan. The show has received critical acclaim, sustaining positive reviews across its first three series. However, its fourth series received mixed reviews. The show's popularity resulted in inquiries for coats similar to Sherlock's, reported retailer Debenhams. Garment manufacturer Bellstaff put the wool trench coat worn by Benedict Cumberbatch back into production before the series had ended. According to overnight data provided by the Broadcaster's Audience Research Board, the highest overnight figure from the first series of Sherlock was 7.5 million for the opening episode, A Study in Pink, whereas the second series averaged over 8 million viewers. Supernatural is an American dark fantasy drama television series created by Eric Kripke. Starring Jared Padalecki as Sam Winchester and Jensen Ackles as Dean Winchester. Before bringing Supernatural to television, creator Eric Kripke had been developing the series for nearly 10 years, having been fascinated with urban legends since he was a child. He had originally envisioned Supernatural as a movie. During its first season, the show received generally mixed critical reception, but the reception from critics has grown more favorable as the series progressed with subsequent seasons receiving generally positive reviews from critics. Being a cult series, Supernatural has garnered a dedicated fanbase. The first season consists of 22 episodes. It premiered on the WB on September 13, 2005. The series follows the two brothers as they hunt demons, ghosts, monsters, and other supernatural beings. After their mother's death in a suspicious fire that burns down their house 22 years prior, Sam and Dean Winchester's father goes missing during a hunting trip. As a result, Dean tracks down Sam at Stanford University and they begin to live a life on the road, in Dean's black 1967 Chevrolet Impala with Kansas license plates. However, their father is not a typical hunter. He hunts supernatural creatures like ghosts, vampires, and spirits, and has trained his sons to do the same. Along the way, Sam and Dean save innocent people, fight creatures and ghosts, and collect clues to their father's whereabouts. Sam begins to mysteriously develop psychic abilities and visions as they travel. The Good Doctor is an American medical drama television series based on the 2013 South Korean series of the same name. Actor Daniel Day Kim, world famous for his role in the TV series Lost, noticed the original series and bought the rights for his production company. He began adapting the series and, in 2015, eventually shopped it to CBS Television Studios. CBS decided against creating a pilot. Because Kim felt so strongly about the series, he bought back the rights from CBS. Eventually, Sony Pictures Television and Kim worked out a deal and brought on David Shore, creator of the Fox medical drama House, to develop the series. In the first episode, on the way to begin his surgical residency at San Jose Hospital, Dr. Sean Murphy witnesses an airport sign fall and shatter glass onto a young boy. With his unique ability to visualize the internal body and using improvised methods and tools, Sean is able to stabilize the boy. In a hospital board meeting, Dr. Aaron Glassman, president of the hospital, tries to convince the board to hire Sean, despite his autism. Throughout the episode, flashbacks were shown, revealing the picture of Sean's childhood and his motivation for becoming a doctor. Stranger Things is an American science fiction horror drama television series created by the Duffer Brothers and streaming on Netflix. The brothers serve as showrunners and are executive producers along with Sean Levy and Dan Cohen. The series premiered on Netflix on July 15, 2016. Set in the 1980s in the fictional town of Hawkins, Indiana, the first season focuses on the investigation into the disappearance of a young boy amid supernatural events occurring around the town. The Duffer brothers develop Stranger Things as a mix of investigative drama alongside supernatural elements portrayed with horror, science fiction, and childlike sensibilities. Setting the series in the 1980s, the Duffer brothers infused references to the pop culture of that decade while several themes and directorial aspects were inspired primarily by the works of Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, and Stephen King, as well as anime and video games. Stranger Things has attracted record viewership on Netflix and has an international fan base. 
The series has received critical acclaim for its characterization, atmosphere, acting, soundtrack, directing, writing, and homages to 1980s films. It has received many awards and nominations, including 39 Primetime Emmy Award nominations, for Golden Globe Award nominations, a British Academy Television Award nomination, two Directors Guild of America Award nominations, three Writers Guild of America Award nominations, and three Grammy Award nominations. Stranger Things gained a dedicated fan base soon after its release. Forever is an American fantasy crime drama television series that aired on ABC. Created by Matt Miller, it centers on the character of Dr. Henry Morgan, an immortal New York City medical examiner who uses his extensive knowledge to assist the New York City Police Department in solving crimes and to discover a way to end his immortality. Flashbacks within each episode reveal various details of Henry's life. The concept for Forever came from a conversation between series creator Matt Miller and his son about death. After the conversation, Miller began to imagine what life would be like if a person was immortal but everyone else, including that person's own children, were mortals. He created a character who viewed immortality as a curse because of the pain of seeing family and friends die and who would attempt to find a way to end his immortality. That concept informed Miller's decision to make his character a doctor-turned-medical examiner who used his occupation for research into his immortality. Another series-long story arc explored how other people learned of Henry's immortality. The first storyline in the arc was the season's second story arc, Henry's determination to learn the identity of a second immortal who knows about it. The second immortal character's morals would contrast his protagonist's morals, serving as an antagonist for the main character. Beginning with the pilot, Miller structured each episode by telling two stories in the episode. The first was a traditional procedural plotline. The second story was a flashback from Henry's past. The Vampire Diaries is an American supernatural teen drama television series developed by Kevin Williamson and Julie Pleck, based on the book series of the same name. The series premiered on September 10, 2009, and concluded on March 10, 2017, having aired 171 episodes over eight seasons. The series is set in the fictional town of Mystic Falls, Virginia, a town charged with supernatural history. It follows the life of Elena Gilbert, a teenage girl who has just lost both parents in a car accident, as she falls in love with a 162-year-old vampire named Stefan Salvatore. Their relationship becomes increasingly complicated as Stefan's mysterious older brother Damon Salvatore returns, with a plan to bring back their past love Catherine Pierce, a vampire who looks exactly like Elena. Although Damon initially harbors a grudge against his brother for forcing him to become a vampire, he later reconciles with Stefan and falls in love with Elena, creating a love triangle among the three. Both brothers attempt to protect Elena as they face various villains and threats to their town, including Catherine. The brothers' history and the town's mythology are revealed through flashbacks as the series goes on. The Vampire Diaries initially received mixed reviews, which through the course of the show, improved significantly. Many TV critics felt the series improved with each episode. Sarah Hughes of The Independent says The Vampire Diaries turns into a well-crafted, interestingly developed series despite a mediocre opening episode. Arcane is an adult animated action-adventure streaming television series created by Christian Link and Alex Yee for Netflix. Arcane's first season was released to critical acclaim, with praise directed at its animation, story, world-building, action sequences, characters, emotional weight, and voice acting. Some have noted the series' appeal to both casual viewers who have never played League of Legends and to longtime fans of the game. It also set the record as Netflix's highest-rated series so far within a week of its premiere, ranked first on the Netflix Top 10 chart in 52 countries, and ranked second on the chart in the United States. The site's critical consensus reads, Arcane makes an arresting first impression, combining a spectacular mix of 2D and 3D animation with an emotionally compelling story to deliver a video game adaptation that could become legendary. The first episode, which introduces the viewer to what is going on, has a very interesting and gripping plot. Rebels from the repressed undercity of Zaun march across a bridge into Piltover, resulting in the brutal pushback by Piltover enforcers. During the ensuing violence, Sisters Powder and Vi find their parents dead in the rubble and are taken in by Vander, 
the leader of the failed rebellion, as his own children. Years later, Vi and Powder rob a Piltavan penthouse with their adopted brothers, Milo and Clagger, after receiving a tip from their friend Echo. Powder steals a set of magical crystals, accidentally shattering one when the owner of the penthouse returns. The resulting explosion destroys a large portion of the building and alerts enforcers to their presence, whom they narrowly escape. Returning to the Undercity, the siblings encounter Deckard and his thugs, while they beat them in a fistfight, Powder is chased and loses the loot. Vander, now a barman and a de facto community leader in Zaun, scolds the children for their carelessness, and attempts to smooth things over with Grayson, the sheriff of the enforcers. Vi berates Milo for calling Powder a jinx and reassures her sister that things will get better. In the lowest parts of the Undercity, Crime Lord Silco extracts information from Deckard and tests a new mutagen known as Shimmer on a Rat. Charmed is an American fantasy drama television series. The series' narrative follows a trio of sisters, known as the Charmed Ones, the most powerful good witches of all time, who use their combined power of three to protect innocent lives from evil beings such as demons and warlocks. Each sister possesses unique magical powers that grow and evolve, while they attempt to maintain normal lives in modern-day San Francisco. Keeping their supernatural identities separate and secret from their ordinary lives often becomes a challenge for them, with the exposure of magic having far-reaching consequences on their various relationships and resulting in a number of police and FBI investigations throughout the series. The series starts in 1998 when Phoebe Halliwell returns from New York and moves back into the family's Halliwell Manor in San Francisco to live with her sisters Prue and Piper. When Phoebe discovers the family's Book of Shadows in the attic, she learns that she and her sisters are the most powerful witches ever known, destined to protect both innocents and the world at large from demons, warlocks, and other evil creatures. Phoebe, reasonably suspecting the book to be a novelty, reads its initial inscription, unaware that it also happens to be an incantation activating the sisters' supernatural powers once all three are reunited in their ancestral home. By the end of the first episode, each sister learns that she has a unique magical power that allows them to cast spells and brew potions. Prue, the eldest, has the power of telekinesis, and in season 2 she develops the power of astral projection. Piper, the middle sister, has the power of molecular immobilization. As she grows more proficient, she learns how to freeze only certain people or objects or body parts, as she wishes. The Queen's Gambit is a 2020 American coming-of-age period drama streaming television miniseries based on the 1983 novel of the same name by Walter Tevis. The title refers to The Queen's Gambit, a chess opening. The series was written and directed by Scott Frank, who created it with Alan Scott, who owns the rights to the book. Beginning in the mid-1950s and proceeding into the 1960s, the story follows the life of Beth Harmon, a fictional chess prodigy on her rise to the top of the chess world while struggling with dependencies. Netflix released The Queen's Gambit on October 23, 2020. After four weeks it had become Netflix's most-watched scripted miniseries, making it Netflix's top program in 63 countries. The series received critical acclaim, with particular praise for Taylor Joy's performance, the cinematography, and production values. It also received a positive response from the chess community for its accurate depictions of high-level chess, and data suggests that it increased public interest in the game. The first episodes were immediately loved by millions of viewers. The plot was very intriguing. In 1950s Lexington, Kentucky, an eight-year-old Beth, having lost her mother in a car crash, is taken to an orphanage where she is taught chess by the building's custodian, Mr. Shabel. She quickly becomes a strong chess player due to her visualization skills. A few years later, Beth is adopted by childless suburban couple Alma and Alston Wheatley. As she adjusts to her new home, Beth enters a chess tournament and wins despite having no prior experience in competitive chess. Alma is initially resistant to Beth's interest in chess, but after Beth wins her first tournament, Alma is fully supportive of her adoptive daughter's sojourns to enter various chess competitions. With help from her oldest friend Jolene, whom she grew up with in the orphanage, she prepares for her biggest challenge yet, a major international chess tournament against the world's best players in Moscow. In October 2020, the series was the most watched show on Netflix in the United States. On November 23, 2020, Netflix announced that the series had been watched by 62 million households since its release. 
The series received praise from the chess community for its realistic portrayal of the game and players. Production designer Uli Hanisch developed the series sets to evoke the aesthetic of the 1950s and 1960s. Much of the series was filmed in Berlin because interiors found there could stand in for a large number of the show's locations, including Las Vegas, Cincinnati, Mexico City, Moscow, and Paris. Silicon Valley is an American comedy television series. The series, a parody of Silicon Valley culture, focuses on Richard Hendricks, a programmer who founds a startup company called Pi Piper, and chronicles his struggles trying to maintain his company while facing competition from larger entities. Silicon Valley has received critical acclaim since its airing, with praise for its writing and humor. The show has been nominated for numerous accolades, including five consecutive Primetime Emmy Award nominations for Outstanding Comedy Series. The first episode introduces the viewer to an interesting plot. Richard Hendricks is a low-level programmer with futuristic internet giant Hooli. He is often taunted by his more successful work colleagues, and his ideas are dismissed by egotistical entrepreneur Ehrlich Bachmann, who owns the tech development incubator where Richard lives with fellow programmers Nelson Bigetti, Bertram Guilfoyle and Dinesh Chugtai. However when Hooli stumbles upon the music copyright service that Richard is working on, entitled Pied Piper, they discover that hidden within the useless application is the best file compression algorithm in the world, and news spreads quickly. Eventually Richard is caught between a $10 million buyout by Hooli CEO Gavin Belson, and a $200,000 investment from eccentric billionaire Peter Gregory, he must decide whether to give up his program to the highest bidder, or to take the investment and create a business out of it himself. After having a panic attack and vomiting, Richard runs into Peter's assistant Monica, who tells him that she believes in him and his idea. Richard decides to take the investment, and run the business himself. Co-creator and executive producer Mike Judge had worked in a Silicon Valley startup early in his career. In 1987, he was a programmer at Parallax, a company with about 40 employees. Judge disliked the company's culture and his colleagues and quit after less than three months, but the experience gave him the background to later create a show about the region's people and companies. Silicon Valley has received critical acclaim since its premiere. In January 2017, in an audience interaction by Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, Gates recounted the episode in Silicon Valley in which the protagonists try to pitch their product to various venture capitalists, saying it reminded him of his own experiences. The Mandalorian is an American space western television series created by Jon Favreau for the streaming service Disney+. It is the first live-action series in the Star Wars franchise, beginning five years after the events of Return of the Jedi. It stars Pedro Pascal as the title character, a lone bounty hunter who goes on the run after being hired to retrieve the child. Star Wars creator George Lucas had begun developing a live-action Star Wars television series by 2009, but this project was deemed too expensive to produce. He sold Lucasfilm to Disney in October 2012. Subsequently, work on a new Star Wars series began for Disney+. The Mandalorian premiered with the launch of Disney Plus on November 12, 2019. The eight-episode first season was met with positive reviews, was nominated for Outstanding Drama Series, and won seven Primetime Creative Arts Emmy Awards. And the first episode was just great. The episode stars Pedro Pascal as the Mandalorian, a lone bounty hunter who is given a mission by the mysterious client. The episode won two Primetime Emmy Awards. Five years after the fall of the Empire, Mandalorian bounty hunter collects a fugitive after a scuffle in a bar on the ice planet Pagadon and returns to the planet Navarro in his ship, the Razor Crest. He meets Grief Karga, the leader of the Bounty Hunters Guild, but he only offers low-paying bounties that will not cover travel expenses. Looking to get a bigger bounty, the Mandalorian accepts a mysterious commission for which Karga can only provide an address to meet the client who wants the details of the job to be private. The client, who uses Imperial Stormtroopers as bodyguards, gives the Mandalorian a vague target to bring back alive. The only information he is allowed to give is an age, 50 years old, and last known location. In exchange, the client promises to reward the bounty hunter with a container full of Besker, a rare metal used by Mandalorians to forge their armor. Receiving a single bar of Besker as a down payment, the Mandalorian meets with the armorer at an enclave housing fellow Mandalorians. The armorer, 
who melts the metal into a pauldron reserved for the Mandalorian, says the metal was gathered in the Great Purge and the excess will sponsor foundlings, as the Mandalorian once was. The nature of good and evil and the question of nature versus nurture is raised repeatedly throughout the Mandalorian. Vikings is a historical drama television series created and written by Michael Hurst. Vikings is inspired by the sagas of Ragnar Lodbrok, a Viking who is one of the best-known legendary Norse heroes and notorious as the scourge of Anglo-Saxon England and West Francia. The show portrays Ragnar as a farmer who rises to fame by raiding England and eventually becomes the Scandinavian king, with the support of his family and fellow warriors. In the later seasons, the series follows the fortunes of his sons and their adventures in England, Scandinavia, the Mediterranean, and North America. The series began filming in July 2012 at Ashford Studios in Ireland, which at the time was a newly built facility. This location was chosen for its scenery and tax advantages. The first episode received favorable reviews, with an average rating of 71% according to Metacritic. Many characters are based on real people from history or legend and the events portrayed are broadly drawn from history. The history of more than a century has been condensed, people who could never have met are shown as of similar age, with the history amended for dramatic effect. The main role is played by Travis Fimmel. The man at the time of filming the series was already 35 years, but before the series Vikings, he got only a minor minor role. He was better known as a model, because he did not see himself as the fearless leader of the harsh northerners. After the series, the actor became one of the most recognizable among contemporary celebrities. Good Omens is a fantasy comedy series created and written by Neil Gaiman, based on his and Terry Pratchett's 1990 novel of the same name. Michael Sheen and David Tennant lead a large ensemble cast as Aziraphale and Crowley respectively, an angel and a demon. Set in 2018, the series follows the demon Crowley and the angel Aziraphale, long-time acquaintances who, having grown accustomed to life on Earth as representatives of heaven and hell, seek to prevent the coming of the Antichrist and with it Armageddon, the final battle between heaven and hell. Pratchett and Gaiman had planned to adapt Good Omens as a movie for years, with various directors and writers attached to the project along the way. In 2011, a television series, written by Terry Jones and Gavin Scott, was first reported to be in the works but no further plans were announced. After Pratchett's death, Gaiman refused to ever consider working on the adaptation alone but changed his mind when he received a letter from Pratchett, written to be sent after his death, urging him to finish the project. The first episode was very interesting to many viewers. The angel Aziraphale and demon Crowley meet for the first time at the Garden of Eden as Adam and Eve are expelled after Crowley tempts them with an apple. Fast forward 11 years before Armageddon. Crowley delivers the Antichrist to a satanic convent, where the baby is to be given to an American diplomat and his family. However, a mix-up occurs and the Antichrist ends up with a middle-class English family, the Youngs. Crowley and Aziraphale meet to discuss the coming apocalypse. Aziraphale reluctantly agrees to work with Crowley. They decide that if each works to influence the boy warlock, whom they believe to be the Antichrist, he will be neither good nor evil, just normal. In the present day, Crowley and Aziraphale attend his 11th birthday party, but realize they have the wrong boy when the Hellhound fails to appear. Meanwhile, the Hellhound has found his master, Adam Young. Adam names him Dog, which changes him into a small terrier, unknowingly initiating Armageddon. Doctor Who is a British science fiction television program broadcast by the BBC since 1963. The program depicts the adventures of a Time Lord called the Doctor, an extraterrestrial being who appears to be human. The Doctor explores the universe in a time-traveling spaceship called the TARDIS. The TARDIS exterior appears as a blue British police box, which was a common sight in Britain in 1963 when the series first aired. With various companions, the Doctor combats foes, works to save civilizations, and helps people in need. Beginning with William Hartnell, 13 actors have headlined the series as the Doctor. In 2017, Jodie Whittaker became the first woman to officially play the role on television. The transition from one actor to another is written into the plot of the show with the concept of regeneration into a new incarnation, a plot device in which a Time Lord transforms into a new body when the current one is too badly harmed to heal normally. 
Each actor's portrayal is unique, but all represent stages in the life of the same character, and together, they form a single lifetime with a single narrative. The time-traveling feature of the plot means that different incarnations of the Doctor occasionally meet. The program was originally intended to appeal to a family audience as an educational program using time travel as a means to explore scientific ideas and famous moments in history. The show is a significant part of British popular culture, and elsewhere, it has gained a cult following. It has influenced generations of British television professionals, many of whom grew up watching the series. The program is listed in Guinness World Records as the longest-running science fiction television show in the world, as well as the most successful science fiction series of all time. The program originally ran from 1963 to 1989. There was an unsuccessful attempt to revive regular production in 1996 with a backdoor pilot in the form of a television film titled Doctor Who. The program was relaunched in 2005 and since then, has been produced in-house by BBC Wales in Cardiff. House is an American medical drama television series. The series' main character is Dr. Gregory House, an unconventional, misanthropic medical genius who leads a team of diagnosticians at the fictional Princeton Plainsboro Teaching Hospital in New Jersey. The series' premise originated with Paul Atanasio, while David Shore, who is credited as creator, was primarily responsible for the conception of the title character. House often clashes with his fellow physicians, including his own diagnostic team, because many of his hypotheses about patients' illnesses are based on subtle or controversial insights. His flouting of hospital rules and procedures frequently leads him into conflict with his boss, hospital administrator and dean of medicine Dr. Lisa Cuddy. House was among the top 10 series in the United States from its second season through the fourth season. Distributed to 66 countries, House was the most watched television program in the world in 2008. The show received numerous awards, including five Primetime Emmy Awards, two Golden Globe Awards, a Peabody Award, and nine People's Choice Awards. On 2012 Fox announced that the eighth season, then in progress, would be its last. The series is structured around a central plot with some supporting secondary stories and narratives that cross over seasons. Most episodes revolve around the diagnosis of a primary patient and start with a cold open set outside the hospital, showing events ending with the onset of the patient's symptoms. The typical episode follows the team in their attempts to diagnose and treat the patient's illness, which often fail until the patient's condition is critical. They usually treat only patients whom other doctors have not accurately diagnosed, and House routinely rejects cases he does not find interesting. The Clone is a Brazilian drama telenovela created by Gloria Perez and directed by Jamie Monjardim. It was aired from October 1, 2001 to June 15, 2002, with 221 episodes. It also was an international success, selling in more than 90 countries. In the early 1980s, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Giovanna Antonelli as Jade, a young girl, is orphaned and has to go to Morocco where her uncle Ali lives. Thus, once she arrives in Morocco, she must learn all concomitant new traditions and customs, adjust to her new way of living, and face all the punishments she will be exposed to because of her conflicting personality in actions that go against her religion. Back in Rio, a well-off family, the Faraz, go to vacation in Morocco. Twin brothers Lucas and Diogo Faraz, along with Leonidas, their father, and Dr. Augusto Albiri, friend of the family and the twins' godfather who is a genetic scientist, visit Ali, a friend of Albiri's. There, Lucas and Jade meet for the first time, and they fall in love at first sight. The clone aired in Brazil comprising 221 episodes, of variable duration. However, when syndicated and sold to other countries the telenovela got the number of episodes enlarged to 250 and the duration fixed at 45 minutes. The clone was a big hit, being aired in several countries all around the world. It was dubbed in several languages. The part of the telenovela dealing with Islamic customs and attitudes mixes traditions from diverse countries, rather than those of Morocco alone, and has been criticized for its inaccurate representation of these traditions, according to Barbosa. These criticisms include the portrayal of polygamy as commonly accepted in Morocco, women as rarely working outside the home or pursuing an advanced education, and women having only unimportant roles within the family. In January 2010, a remake in Spanish started to be recorded in Colombia.
The Sopranos is an American crime drama television series created by David Chase. The story revolves around Tony Soprano, a New Jersey-based Italian-American mobster, portraying the difficulties that he faces as he tries to balance his family life with his role as the leader of a criminal organization. Tony Soprano has a panic attack that prompts him to see a psychiatrist. The pilot was ordered in 1997, and the show premiered on HBO on January 10, 1999. The series ran for six seasons totaling 86 episodes until June 10, 2007. The Sopranos is widely regarded as one of the greatest television series of all time. It has been the subject of critical analysis, controversy, and parody, and has spawned books, a video game, soundtrack albums, podcasts and assorted merchandise. Several members of the show's cast and crew were largely unknown to the public but have since had successful careers. Since its inception in 1999, the series has become a cultural phenomenon, gaining wide popularity and critical acclaim. This was due to the innovative approach to the description of the life of the Mafia, the American family, the problems of the Italian-American community in the United States and the boundaries of what society considers morality. The first episode was very exciting. At a family picnic, Tony collapses. In the hospital, during the examination, it turns out that this is not a physiological deviation, but a psychological one. On the recommendation of his doctor neighbor, Bruce Cusimano, Anthony goes to see psychiatrist Jennifer Melfi. Tony cannot tell all the details of his life due to the fact that his story is connected with crime. Moreover, Dr. Melfi immediately warned him that if she learns anything about even a possible harm to a person, she is legally obliged to report this data to the police. In the process of therapy, some details of Anthony's life are revealed, his attitude to life, to the family, to children and to his mother, which makes him very nervous, because no matter what he does, no matter how he behaves, his mother Livia always remains dissatisfied with him. Tony carefully hides the fact of visiting a psychotherapist from his friends. The X-Files is an American science fiction drama television series created by Chris Carter. The series revolves around FBI special agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully who investigate X-Files, marginalized, unsolved cases involving paranormal phenomena. The X-Files was a hit for the Fox network and received largely positive reviews, although its long-term story arc was criticized near the conclusion. Both the series itself and lead actors Duchovny and Anderson received multiple awards and nominations, and by its conclusion the show was the longest-running science fiction series in U.S. television history. Duchovny had worked in Los Angeles for three years prior to The X-Files, at first he wanted to focus on feature films. In 1993, his manager, Melanie Green, gave him the script for the pilot episode of The X-Files. Green and Duchovny were both convinced it was a good script, so he auditioned for the lead. Duchovny's audition was terrific, though he talked rather slowly. While the casting director of the show was very positive toward him, Carter thought that he was not particularly intelligent. He asked Duchovny if he could please imagine himself as an FBI agent in future episodes. Duchovny, however, turned out to be one of the best read people that Carter knew. Anderson auditioned for the role of Scully in 1993. After auditions, Carter felt she was the only choice. Carter insisted that Anderson had the kind of no-nonsense integrity that the role required. For portraying Scully, Anderson won numerous major awards, the Screen Actors Guild Award in 1996 and 1997, an Emmy Award in 1997, and a Golden Globe Award 1997. The pilot premiered on September 10, 1993, and reached 12 million viewers. As the season progressed, ratings began to increase and the season finale garnered 14 million viewers. The first season revolves around its two main characters, which had been defined early in conception as the believer and the skeptic. The season saw the series quickly gaining popularity, with ratings rising steadily throughout its run, and garnered generally positive reviews from critics and the media. It helped to make stars of its two lead roles, and several of its taglines and catchphrases have since become cultural staples. The Office is an American sitcom television series. Based on the 2001-2003 BBC series of the same name created by Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, it was adapted for American television by Greg Daniels. The Office was met with mixed reviews during its short first season, but the following seasons, particularly those featuring Carell, 
received significant acclaim from television critics as the show's characters, content, structure, and tone diverged considerably from the British version. This season introduced the main characters, and established the general plot, which revolves around Michael Scott, regional manager of the Scranton branch office, trying to convince the filmmakers of the documentary that he presides over a happy, well-running office. Meanwhile, sales rep Jim Halpert finds methods to undermine his cube mate, Dwight Schrute, receptionist Pam Beasley tries to deal with Michael's insensitivities and flubs, and temporary employee Ryan Howard is acting mostly as an observer of the insanity around him. The first episode received largely mixed reviews from critics. After the first episodes, critics thought The Office would be another failed remake of a British comedy. Despite these criticisms, the remainder of the season earned mostly positive reviews among critics. The filming process is organized in such a way that the series took the form of a kind of reality show. Most of the dialogues in which are built on improvisation, and the actors do not know where the camera is at the moment. The first season was filmed in a real office. During the second season, NBC moved filming to a special studio that replicated the setting of the first season, including plaques and testimonials hanging on the walls. A detailed script was written for each episode of the series, but the actors were always given the opportunity to improvise. In early episodes, the camera crews were limited primarily to office space, but as the show expanded, the characters' personal lives were included, and the cameras took on the ubiquitous, even haunting function of making a character's entire life available to the viewer. Cameras begin to accompany the heroes from the office and to their homes. Breaking Bad is an American neo-western crime drama television series created and produced by Vince Gilligan. The series stars Brian Cranston as Walter White and Aaron Paul as his accomplice Jesse Pinkman. It was set and filmed in New Mexico, and tells the story of Walter White, an underpaid, overqualified, and dispirited high school chemistry teacher who is struggling with a recent diagnosis of stage 3 lung cancer. Walter turns to a life of crime, partnering with his former student Jesse Pinkman. Since its conclusion, the show has been lauded by critics as one of the greatest television series of all time. As the series progressed, Gilligan and the writing staff of Breaking Bad made Walter increasingly unsympathetic. Before completing the script, Gilligan revealed that it was difficult to develop the character of Walter White because the character was getting darker and more morally conflicted. Writing music for each episode takes about a week. Each episode's soundtrack was typically led by meetings between the composer, music supervisor, and music editor with Vince Gilligan and the key people involved in the episode's creation. They discussed where the music should be and where not. The first season received numerous awards and nominations, including four Primetime Emmy Award nominations with two wins. Brian Cranston won for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series and Lynn Willingham won for Outstanding Single Camera Picture Editing for a Drama Series. The first season of the series, starting with the pilot episode, introduces the viewer to the life of Walter White, a 50-year-old high school chemistry teacher from the city of Albuquerque. In addition to teaching, he is forced to work part-time at a car wash to support his pregnant wife and disabled son. However, Walter has to rethink his usual lifestyle when he is diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer. Fargo is an American black comedy crime drama television series created and primarily written by Noah Hawley. The show is inspired by the 1996 film of the same name, which was written and directed by the Cohn brothers, and takes place within the same fictional universe. The Cones were impressed by Hawley's script and agreed to be named as executive producers. The series premiered on April 15, 2014. Each season is heavily influenced by various Cone Brothers films, with each containing numerous references to them. The first season, set primarily in Minnesota and North Dakota from January 2006 to February 2007 and starring Billy Bob Thornton, Allison Tolman, Colin Hanks, and Martin Freeman, received wide acclaim from critics. It won the Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Miniseries, Outstanding Directing, and Outstanding Casting, and received 15 additional nominations including Outstanding Writing, another Outstanding Directing nomination, and Acting nominations for all four leads. In 1997, a pilot was filmed for an intended television series based on the film. Filming of the first season began in Calgary, Alberta, in late 2013 and concluded in 2014. The first season garnered eight Primetime Emmy Award nominations. 
The first season of Fargo received critical acclaim. It currently holds a Metacritic score of 85 out of 100 based on 40 reviews, indicating universal acclaim. Lie to Me is an American crime drama television series. In the show, Dr. Cal Lightman and his colleagues in the Lightman Group accept assignments from third parties, commonly local and federal law enforcement, and assist in investigations, reaching the truth through applied psychology. The show received mostly positive reviews from television critics. Tim Roth as Dr. Cal Lightman, a brilliant expert in the science of body language, especially microexpressions, and founder of the Lightman Group, a private company that operates as an independent contractor to assist investigations of local and federal law enforcement through applied psychology. Though often confronted by people's skepticism, Lightman uses any technique he deems necessary to reach the truth, however elaborate or confronting. He is divorced and shares custody of his teenage daughter. He cares deeply about his colleague Jillian Foster. Season 1 opens with Cal and Jillian hiring a new associate, TSA officer Ria Torres, who scored extraordinarily high on Cal's deception detection diagnostic, and is in turn labeled a natural at deception detection. Her innate talent in the field clashes with Cal's academic approach, and he often shows off by rapidly analyzing her every facial expression. She counters by reading Lightman and, when he least expects it, peppers conversations with quotes from his books. Establishment, Osman is a Turkish historical drama television series. It is a sequel to the popular multi-episode show Risen Ertegrel, which gained fans around the world and was one of the highest rated shows in Turkey. The actors of the series underwent special training for nine months. They learned how to ride a horse, wield a sword, practice swordplay, shoot an arrow, and learn martial choreography. Their military training took place in mountainous and forested areas, where they built their fortifications, sought water and prepared food. Audiences love the beautiful sets, which look authentic, and the detailed costumes, which give a fairly accurate representation of the historical era. The story of the founder of the state, who became part of national legends, cannot turn out neutral. It will be fiery and memorable. For Turkish viewers there is nothing unnatural about this, but for those who watched the series in other countries it may seem a bit strange. The series is focuses on the life of Osman, the founder of the Ottoman Empire. The TV show includes Osman Ghazi's internal and external struggles and how he establishes and controls the Ottoman Empire. It portrays his struggles against Byzantium and the Mongol Ilkhanate and how he was able to secure independence from the Sultanate of Rum to establish a sovereign state that would stand up to the Byzantine and Mongol empires and would honor the Turks. The character of Osman faces many enemies and traitors in his quest and the show illustrates how he was able to overcome these obstacles and fulfill his mission with the help of his loyal companions, family, and friends. Constant Love is a Turkish romantic television series. The plot proved interesting to many viewers. Ray Yen is Nesu Sadoglu's granddaughter, patriarch of the prominent Sadoglu family in the town of Midyat. However, she has never felt loved by anyone in her household except her father, Hazar, her mother, Zara, and her younger sister, Gul. Ray Yen has been mistreated by her grandfather since childhood because she is not his biological granddaughter, and the only reason he accepted her into the family was at Hazar's request. One morning, Ray Yen goes out on horseback to watch the sunrise. On her way back, her horse is nearly hit by a car. Ray Yen falls and loses consciousness. The driver of the car, a handsome young man named Miran, is immediately attracted to her and offers to drive her back home. Yaren, daughter of Hazar's brother, Chihan, is infatuated with Miran. When Miran falls in love with her cousin, Yaren swears revenge on Rayen for stealing Miran from her and ruining her life. Eventually, Miran and Rayen are married. However, Miran abandons Rayen after their first night as husband and wife, sparking intense feelings of betrayal and hatred in Rayen. She vows to never let him forget what he has done to her. Soon, Rayen finds out that everything Miran has told her about himself is a lie, his name, his background, his family, and the wedding. Miran's plan all along was to gain the trust of the Sadagla family, marry their innocent daughter and then leave her the morning after, humiliating the entire family and thus, exacting the first part of his revenge against the Sadaglas. Black 
Black Mirror is a British anthology television series created by Charlie Brooker. Individual episodes explore a diversity of genres, but most are set in near-future dystopias utilizing a science fiction technology, a type of speculative fiction. The series is based on the Twilight Zone and uses technology to comment on contemporary social issues. As Black Mirror is an anthology series, each episode is standalone and can be watched in any order. The majority of episodes are set in dystopian near-futures with novel technologies that exaggerate a trait from contemporary culture, often the internet. Black Mirror can be seen to demonstrate a negative view of unending pursuit of scientific and technological advancement. The majority of episodes end unhappily. However, characters who carefully consider the risks of technology with which they engage are met with happy endings. The first episode received mostly positive critical reviews. Most reviewers found the episode plausible. Sims commented that every twist seems organic and every decision rational, leading the audience to overlook the insanity of the premise or any minor plot hole. The acting received a positive critical reception. Airing on December 4, 2011, the episode garnered 2.07 million viewers, according to 7-day figures from the broadcaster's audience research board. It was nominated for Best Single Drama at the 2013 Broadcast Awards. Better Call Saul is an American crime drama television series created by Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould. It is a spin-off, prequel, and a sequel to Gilligan's previous series, Breaking Bad. Set primarily in the early to middle part of the 2000s in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the series develops Jimmy McGill, an earnest lawyer and former con artist, into an egocentric criminal defense attorney known as Saul Goodman. Also shown is the moral decline of retired police officer Mike Ehrmantraut, who becomes closely affiliated with the Juarez drug cartel to support his granddaughter and her widowed mother. These two storylines are mostly told separately but do converge when Jimmy and Mike work together. At the start of the series, Jimmy struggles financially while working as a court-appointed lawyer. He lives in the back room of a nail salon which doubles as an office. Better Call Saul has received critical acclaim, with particular praise for its acting, characters, writing, direction, and cinematography, many critics have called it a worthy successor to Breaking Bad and one of the greatest television series of all time, with some deeming it superior to its predecessor. It has garnered many nominations. Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould began planning a television spin-off of Breaking Bad as early as 2009. Each episode's title sequence features a different low-quality image that recalls Saul Goodman's days on Breaking Bad. This includes the inflatable Statue of Liberty balloon that sat atop Saul's office, a drawer of burner phones kept in his desk, and a bench that advertised his business at a bus stop. Gould and Gilligan were inspired by the notoriously low production values of 1980s public access television, and from the fact that Saul Goodman's ads on Breaking Bad were done in the same style. They intended for the title sequences to appear purposefully awful in order to stand out from those of its contemporaries, which generally had increased visual quality and production standards. Some of the title sequences were put together from unused footage from Breaking Bad, but others were filmed specifically to create new ones. Better Call Saul has received critical acclaim and is considered to be an outstanding example of how to successfully produce a prequel and spin-off work that defies expectations. Many critics have called Better Call Saul a worthy successor to Breaking Bad and some have even deemed it superior to its predecessor. Bra Sick is a British comedy drama television series which premiered on Sky One on August 22, 2019 and became Sky's most successful comedy in seven years. The series follows the lives of Vinnie O'Neill and his friends in the fictional town of Holly. The first series consists of six episodes, which concluded on September 19, 2019, receiving positive reviews. Bra Sick follows the lives of Vinnie and his five friends as they live their lives in the fictional northern English town of Holly. The working class group commit various crimes to keep money in their pockets, but as they get older some of them wonder if there's more to life away from the town. Lucy Mangan of The Guardian, reviewing the series, gave it 4 out of 5 stars, saying, it is a hilarious, warm, brutal melange that works because it has heart without sentimentality and authenticity without strain. 
Creator and lead actor Joseph Gilgan has been praised for his performance as Vinnie O'Neill, with review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes commenting, Joseph Gilgan is wonderfully expressive as Vinnie, his volatile features continually scrunching together and apart like the top of a drawstring bag. Yellowstone is an American drama television series created by Taylor Sheridan and John Linson that premiered on June 20, 2018, on Paramount Network. In 2013, Taylor Sheridan began work on the series, having recently grown tired of acting and begun writing screenplays. On May 3, 2017, Paramount Network announced that it had greenlit its first scripted series, Yellowstone. Paramount issued a series order for a first season consisting of 10 episodes. The series stars Kevin Costner, Luke Grimes, Wes Bentley, Kelly Riley, Cole Hauser, and Gil Birmingham. The series follows the conflicts along the shared borders of a large cattle ranch, an Indian reservation, and land developers. The series follows the Dutton family, owners of the largest ranch in Montana, the Yellowstone Dutton Ranch, commonly called the Yellowstone. The plot revolves around family drama at the ranch and the bordering Broken Rock Indian Reservation, National Park, and developers. The territory of the Yellowstone Ranch is a tidbit for the neighbors. But John Dutton, thanks to his sons Lee and Jamie and manager Rip Wheeler, deflects all attacks. John's middle son, Casey, lives on the reservation with his wife and son, rides wild horses, and does not want to communicate with his father. But the new head of this Indian reservation, Thomas Rainwater, is looking for an excuse to start a confrontation with John in order to weaken him and then buy back his land. To do this, he enlists all the disgruntled and ambitious politicians in Montana, and also takes a closer look at Casey. The same territory is claimed by millionaire real estate developer Dan Jenkins, who wants to build a huge luxury block next to the ranch. Friends is an American television sitcom created by David Crane and Martha Kaufman. The show revolves around six friends in their 20s and 30s who live in Manhattan. Friends received acclaim throughout its run, becoming one of the most popular television shows of all time. The series was nominated for 62 Primetime Emmy Awards. Episodes depict the Friends' comedic and romantic adventures and career issues. From 1994 to 2004, 10 seasons of the series were filmed. A total of 236 episodes. It was shown with great success in various countries of the world and gained many fans. At the beginning of the series, Rachel leaves her fiancé right at the altar and moves in with her high school friend Monica. After leaving her fiancé, Rachel decides to start an independent life and give up her father's money. Starting working as a waitress in a coffee shop, she is pursuing a career in the fashion world. The work of the screenwriters was also highly appreciated. Serious investment in this part of the work on the series has paid off. Characteristic of The Observed was the fact that its plot is timeless, although it is applicable to acceptable clear time frames that coincide with the time of filming. The political and cultural cataclysms of 1990-2000 do not appear in any way in the dialogues of the characters. The closure of Friends was not only the end of the last season of one of the highest rated and commercially successful series in the United States, but also a turning point for the entire television. Experts talked about the end of an entire era of sitcoms, which was personified by the final episodes of Friends. The great series of 1980-1990 began to gradually fade into the past. According to experts, the series was originally aimed at a target audience from 18 to 49 years old. However, as the creators of the series noted, this was not a show for one generation, it was for everyone.